Reich. Hi, there. Hi. Hi, hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Very good. Very good. Very, very happy to be here. It's awesome to be able to, to speak to everyone. Good morning. Indeed. Good morning. By the way, Peter, it says that your devices are not still connected. So if you want to join, please enable your webcam and your microphone. Um, Olivier, w welcome again once more. Uh, Thank you. I'm really, really excited to have you here. Um, before you start your uh, presentation, yeah. uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself to us? So that we can yeah, of that? course. Um, and I have a, a slide on that um, in the presentation, but I'll, I'll start with that. So I've been at AWS for the past 15 months. Um, prior to that, I was um, prior to, to the game tech role I have today. I was uh, in charge of a relationship with VCs, so helping startups um, and uh, that that get backed by VCs. Uh, and now I help uh, creators, developers, and studios to make great game on uh, on AWS. And I'll explain a little bit later in the presentation how we do that. Uh, prior to that, six time founder or co founder. So I crashed. <laughs> I crashed four of them, but two two kind of uh, did pretty well. So I have a, a good experience in that. <clears throat> Sorry, and prior to that, even I had uh, restaurants and I was a, a head concierge uh, in Palace in Paris. So if you want to talk about funny stories of hotels, business <laughs> development, investment, gaming, you can shoot me on on LinkedIn uh, or uh, or by my uh, my email will be in the presentation as well. Awesome. You, you are like a book, I can tell. You have everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not all success, but uh, we'd be happy to share what I know. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm I'm leaving you the stage and I will be listening to you. Cool. Um, and I'll, I'll share my, my screen now. Go ahead. It, it's right under okay. the screen. Yeah. It should, uh, I had it uh, figured out. If you give me a second. Of course. There we go. And then that's you. And then just let me get to my presentation, which is here. Can you see it now? Um, I cannot see it yet. You will just you have to click the share share button. Right oh, okay. The screen, okay. And then so so I think yeah. Just give me one second. I'm sorry. Of course, no problem um, at all. I think it's the fact that I need to. Um, Meanwhile, for our Turkish viewers, um, we will also be adding Turkish subtitles. I will just translate it in Turkish just a little bit. Um, arkadaşlar, Türkçe is konuşan arkadaşlarımız için diller karıştı. Ben de de um, altyazı ekleyeceğiz bu videonun bittikten sonra ve yayın tekrarını Game Factory Hub YouTube kanalından izleyebilirsiniz. <gülüyor> Just take your time by the way, Olivier. Yeah, I'm so I'm sorry. I'm just trying to restart the PowerPoint thing and then I should be okay. No problems at all. Here we go. All right. So now we're good. Let me just share this. PowerPoint. Can you see something now? Um unfortunately not. Okay, let me try again. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I thought I had it figure it out before the call, but apparently it happens. Luckily we go. are all online, so it's all normal. It's all good. <laughs> so now you should see something or still nothing? I'm still still not seeing anything. Very strange. It's um telling me to share it, but um sorry. No problems at all. Is it so share screen? Yeah, share, 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 and then share. Screen. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it, it doesn't work. Maybe. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sharing the PowerPoint thing. Um. Okay, got, got it. Just. Got it. Yeah. Meanwhile, we can also take questions for everyone. Uh, yeah, please, please do. Yeah, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, while Oliver is present, present doing his presentation, and then. Share button is on the StreamYard site, not on the PowerPoint app, by the way. Uh, Sorry? Almost, the share button is on the StreamYard yeah, site. No, I, yeah, no, I found the share button, but there's a permission thing that apparently is not allowing me to uh, to share the screen. So I'm trying to figure that out. And um, just. Uh, by the way, uh, I just got a message from Peter. He says, Olivier, do you want me to try and share my screen? It, cannot it, would, be, it would be awesome if you're able to do it um, even better. By the way, during all our panels, guys, please feel free to ask any questions. We will do our best to forward it to our guests. Um, I think there I think, we go. Yeah.
Peter, are you able to share it? Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear okay. me? Yeah. So, so sorry. And now I think it should be good. There's a, a setting thing. So, can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it. Perfect. Awesome. Sorry for the delay, guys. Um, no problem at all. Okay. So, we're so good. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry everyone for for the delay so um again really happy to be here it's awesome so thank you uh, thank you for having uh, having us uh so again my name is olivier i lead the the aws business development activities for game tech uh so for france and southern europe and peter uh who's with me also oversees um uh, turkey and azerbaijan so hopefully we'll be able to uh explain to you today what we do what we're about and how we can help so I've already done the presentation, uh, so I will spare you the, the, the second uh, second time. So um, today, the, the topic that we would like to, to present to you is, is why cloud for games, right? So um, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to AWS and also to AWS Game Tech, which is uh, very specific. Um, so you, you know what we do. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the needs of a game developer um, and a game studio uh, and where we can we think cloud can definitely be very helpful for you. Um, and of course, I'll support all that by giving you example of uh, some of our um, customers and how they use AWS um, today. So hopefully you can relate to some of the, the things you're, you're facing. Um, so, so before uh, we dive into the agenda, um, so for those of you who don't know AWS or are new to AWS, I'm just going to give you a, a quick summary um, uh, of what we do and who we are. So AWS stands for um, Amazon Web Services. Um, so what we do is we help uh, game studios provision the core building blocks of their infrastructure. So uh, that's compute, storage, database, networking, security services online. Um, and what's very special about AWS is that we do this through an on-demand pay-as-you-go model. And so uh, with this on-demand service, uh, the cloud really enables the studios to move much quicker uh, in response to player feedback uh, and, and really gives the ability to provision elasticity when, you, when you're uh, talking about instances. Um, so we're you know, present in 245 countries. There are 77 availability zones, 24 geographical regions. So basically what you need to do to understand is that we're worldwide present anywhere you want to uh, deploy games. And we also have 200 plus services, right? So uh, again, um, analytics, machine learning, um, it, it can security, mobile, uh, virtual and augmented reality and so on. So what you need really to, to understand here is that if you can think it, you can probably build it on AWS, right? And that's that's really the takeaway. Okay, so now let me go into uh, the needs of a game studio. So, so when you're making a game, there's a number of things that you need to take into consideration, right? Um, so depending on where you are in the process, you'll need to think about, uh, of course, hardware so that you can work on it, uh, storing source and assets, um, uh, how to build and set up an infrastructure and the pipeline that goes with it, uh, testing and QA. Uh, you also need to uh, think about storing uh, the different build artifacts and binaries at different version along, along the way of your development. Um, and as the, the game stores the asset and the artifacts, they're really your, your key intellectual property, right? So um, you need to make sure that they're securely stored uh, and they can be securely accessed because that's really very important for you. And all this really starts immediately, right? You don't have to do this later on. You can start uh, uh, develop the development of a, a new game and a new studio uh, with AWS right from the start. Um, so. Part two, um, part two uh, that's when you've actually launched the game. Um, so now what you need to think about is, uh, you know, how are your user using the game, right? Are they using the features uh, that you've created? Are they using it in the right way? The way you thought uh, about it when you, when you made them uh, is really the game balance. Is it fun, 
Um, so, so typically, um, you would have an analytic pipeline to collect all the metrics on the usage. Uh, you also need to think about the uptime and the reliability, which is really important because you know, player will will not like playing the game uh, if they get disconnected all the time uh, or if they can't get to play in the first place and connect. Um, performance, performance in global uh, global reach is really, really important as well. Um, similarly, if, if you're playing a game uh, where latency really matters, uh, having a consistent and low latency wherever the players are located is, is very important. <clears throat> Um, and so all of the the the, um, the above and everything that I that I said leads to a, a good player uh, experience or a, a bad one, right? So um, when um, the player experience isn't really what you want it to be, um, you need to develop new features and you need to be able to iterate very quickly in the deployment um, as well. Because if you don't, then you lose uh, your player base, and there's good chances that they won't come back. So AWS really helps you to, to ramp up and, and get that um, done really quickly. Okay, so um, now I'm going to um, uh, detail to you what is AWS uh, Game Tech specifically. Okay, so um, it, it's a team um, that is focused on helping studios, developers um, to, to build great game. And what we do is we offer a, a transverse Amazon offer. So we take everything that Amazon as a group has to offer to gamers, and we put it into one division, which is the AWS Game Tech. Um, and that's dedicated to really helping um, uh, game customers in the best way that we can. So, so really, um, you know, wh whether you're a team of, of uh, one or of 1,000, there's really only one thing that really matters for you is making great games for your players, um, for your players, and that they really want to play, right? And the real question is how you, how do you do that? Um, and so, with uh, AWS Game Tech. Um, because we have this collection of products, right? So we have um, Twitch, of course, if you want to um, be able to really, um, uh, you know, push the game out. Um, and, and then we have also Lumberyard, which is our, um, our game engine. We also have Luna that's uh, com coming, that's for, for cloud gaming. Um, and we have um, managed service as well. Uh, like GameLift, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, and on top of that, obviously, you have all the uh, AWS services, which are or core services. And I'll spend a little bit of time um, to to speak about this, so you can definitely understand what we're what we're referring to. Okay, so before I get to that, I just want you to understand uh, the the philosophy of AWS and how we work. Okay, so and how we we really enable the game innovation. Okay, so first, uh, because it's a it's a pay uh, as you go pricing model, your studio doesn't have to estimate how much computing resources to provide and pay something upfront. Okay. Uh, instead, with AWS, you only pay for the resources you use, uh, much like you would for electricity, for example. So um, it really allows you to pay the right price and not more. Um, you can launch much faster because you have an on-demand infrastructure and it really it, it allows you to, to spin up computing resources whenever you need them in really in a matter of minutes and just a few clicks um, instead of weeks or months uh, that you would uh, take to set up your own hardware on premise, for example. So really that, that increases the, the agility of game development and it really minimizes the latency right from the, right from the start. The third point is really what AWS is trying to do is um, because it brings you a lot of cost and efficiency, um, um, your, your customers are able to experiment, um, our customers are able to experiment um, um, a lot. So meaning um, that you're able to fail a lot and not get to exactly the way you want to do it first, but it doesn't matter because with multiple iteration, um, you you really are able to find the best 
uh, game that you can create um, and, and without risking upfront costs, okay? So the more you try, the more you fail, the more chances you have to be able to find exactly the, the way to, to success. Um, and the, the, the last point on this slide, um, you know, what, what this ultimately means for studio is that they can really focus on the core business, um, which is creating great games. Uh, and so you'd spend your time and energy um, on building that and not, you know, provisioning, operating, maintaining hardware servers and all that kind of thing. And because uh, we take care of the undifferentiated heavy lifting, you only have to, and so the, the IT, uh, the IT infrastructures and services, you actually really spend your money in what really matters, which is the game, and that's our goal. Um, so I've mentioned many of the the, the requirements uh, that you need to think about when you're developing a game. Okay, and so whether if you're looking at um, analytics um, and data pipeline, content distribution, uh, core backend services, or just how to monetize, um, at the heart of all of those services, right, there's your infrastructures, and the choice you make around uh, the the infrastructures on how you build, host, and deploy is a critical component of your game success. Um, on this slide, we're just uh, showing you a selection of game customers that we have. So uh, they're global, um, and it really varies anything between um, uh, AAA studios, so Ubisoft, Riot Games, and also very small independent studios all over the world with just a few developers. Okay, so uh, let me give you um, <clears throat> a few examples. So um, I'm going to talk first about the infrastructure uh, and especially the backend services. Um, so when it comes to, to compute, uh, we often talk about raw compute power. Um, and often game servers are the first solution uh, you hear about in that context. So what AWS Game Tech does is that it gives you flexibility to choose the best route that's suited for you because you have all the options. Um, so if you have AWS competency, you can really create and customize the server infrastructure um, in the cloud uh, really while maintaining control of your own environment. Okay, you can design your architecture and we can help you with our, with our team and support of specialists with solution architects. We also have a lot of uh, documentation and best practices. Um, or if, you're, um, if you don't have the, the time or the, the, the will to do that, what you can do is go for a managed service. Um, so we have a lot of customers who do that because it, it somehow um, uh, helps you um, a, a lot and it's faster. So if you, you can take something like Amazon GameLift, uh, for instance, and you can ship your game much faster and much uh, quicker um, um, to, to your players uh, and the experience is, is awesome. Um, and also, it's really important that you understand that Amazon has the the, the all the broad services. So uh, whether you're looking for a fully managed solution or just the feature that you need, um, a service like GameLift, again, can really help you to maximize cost saving while delivering the lowest latency possible for your players. Um, and so let me dive deep a little bit more on, on GameLift because it's an interesting service. So really with, with Amazon GameLift, what you can do is, is deploy, operate, and scale dedicated servers as a managed service. And really it's leveraging the power and the reliability of AWS. So um, GameLift works with you know, various kinds of game, uh, but it was designed for session-based multiplayer games. Um, and I'm, I'm just gonna uh, walk you through how it works to explain really how simple it is. So, um, Essentially, you upload a build of your server, or your server binary to AWS, and then you integrate um, GameLift using a simple SDK um, and just a few calls to register the servers as healthy and uh, available to take players. And then from that, you create a configuration for which OS to run on, uh, the command line, the, the type and size of, um, of servers, and how many game sessions it can take in a single, uh, in a single run. 
And then basically GameLift takes care of uh, creating all the rest of the infrastructure required for you. So uh, server image, uh, networking uh, necessity, the subnets, the routing, the internet connection, and so on. It also takes care of the auto-scaling policies. <clears throat> So really to scale up and down the fleet of server uh, based on the demand and how many players want to play. Also, the beauty of this service is that you can deploy it into uh, 15 different regions around the globe, really using exactly the same configuration. So like this, you're closer to your user um, and, and you have a low latency required for, for the games that you're creating. Um, GameLift also has um, a matchmaking as a free option. Uh, that you can use so to to match it, make uh, a, a certain set of of player based on their skill class uh, and so on. <clears throat> Sorry, um, and again, it finds the lowest latency to match groups of player to play to play on. So so they they have the best player experience. Um, you can also automatically provide uh, high availability. So if there's an outage. Um, it means the session are routed to another server or region, the best available. So again, it really gives you high availability um, and, and so the, the game won't crash. Um, and, and by scaling to, to match the demand and, and running game server close to your, to your user um, and, and really build, building failovers, you have already ticked so many of the, the operational boxes uh, to keep the cost low, latency and performance, and high reliability. So, so you're pretty much uh, set to, to create a, a, a good experience. Um, so that's a, a customer story. So um, I think it, it's great, uh, a great example of, of GameLick. So it's uh, Behavior Interactive. So it's the uh, Montreal-based developers. Uh, and it's one of the largest independent game studios. So they have something like 600 employees. They have 70 million games sold on every platform. And so in 2019, their uh, uh, most uh, pop, 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 popular IP, um, probably if you've heard of the game, it's your award-winning um, uh, Dead by Daylight, um, celebrated 12 million player. Um, and as Dead by Daylight continued to grow, so did the need for their, their cloud services, right? So they moved Dead by Daylight from uh, their own servers to dedicate, dedicated servers on Amazon GameLift. And they're really able to improve the ping uh, of the game a lot and making the game much faster, making the la latency much more equal for players uh, thanks to a very robust backend. Um, this is also a great, um, a great example uh, and customer story for AWS. So, so now we're going to take a little bit more talk. I'm sorry, a little bit more about scale. Um, and Fortnite is obviously a, a great example um, uh, on how you can develop um, something to scale at unprecedented level on AWS. Um, so. Uh, Fortnite enjoys something like 250 million monthly average users, right? Um, with 12.3 million average same time players all over the world. And to really balance the game uh, and identify anomalies, uh, cheaters, squad bugs, and really to improve the performance, Fortnite is supported by a massive data warehouse. Um, and our uh, user, uh, AWS user conference, it's called reInvent in Las Vegas last year. Epic announced that they were maintaining 35 petabytes uh, data warehouse on AWS. And what's even more impressive is that they're adding another five petabytes per month of data to it. So at this pace, um, it would mean that Fortnite's data warehouse is approximately 95 petabytes, which is uh, almost as large as all the uh, Google entire search engine uh, index. I'm sorry. So that's that's really really big, and it gives you the possibility to to understand how how you can scale on the AWS. Um, so, so similar to GameLift, uh, AWS has a, a, a massive choice of database, most of which are managed services, which allows small team to really leverage the, the same type of capabilities as the big studio. <clears throat> so um, 
live game succeed based on their ability to to listen to their players, right? Uh, learn what they want and deliver it at a moment's notice, the fast as possible. So through all of our services like uh, Amazon Aurora, Neptune, um, uh, games like like Fortnite or Dead by Daylight or even Leagues of Legend are also uh, able to store petabytes of, of player data in the cloud and really analyze it in real time, uh, helping them to really make the, the best decision. And that's how the game is always evolving, listening to their players and improving the gameplay. Um, so the, the biggest the, the game gets, the more data it generates. Um, and so understanding the data will allow you to continue to grow and retain your player, uh, your player base uh, by making better design decision with analytics. So implementing a game analytic pipeline on AWS really allows you to um, ingest, to store, and to an analyze telemetric data to make game improvements. Um, you know, so it's a, that's adjusting the difficulty of a, of an area uh, or a game Mac, providing upgrades for weapons, those kind of things. So it's it's really crucial for um, uh, for you. Um, I, I I I love this example. So so Supercell um, has a really really interesting culture, right? Because they only work with very small autonomous team, and that helps them to reduce the need for hierarchy and processes. Okay, so they uh, you all know Clash of Titans. Uh, so that's two billion uh, installs in seven years, uh, and a little bit more than seven years. What Supercell did is that they migrated three hundred. Uh, database into Amazon uh, Aurora, AWS Aurora, which is a fully managed relational database. And uh, it's really ideal to um, uh, to, to scale the uh, uh, game data. Um, and um, they did this with a team of two uh, server engineers uh, that they were also uh, uh, developing the game features, right? So this is really to show you that it's it's doable even for a small team. Um, okay, so um, finally, I'm going to talk to you about ML and AI, uh, so machine learning, artificial intelligence. So, so really having a, a, a robust analytic pipeline like we've seen is essential uh, to, to being able to um, experiment, measure, and improve the player experience, right? Uh, but it's also the, 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 the key to be able to start using some of the capabilities of machine learning on AWS. Um, and so... Uh, we have customers that we've seen using um, uh, Amazon SageMaker, which is uh, one of the, the ML uh, uh, services that, that uh, uh, um, embedded um, all our ML um, um, offers. Uh, and, and what they do is they, they analyze massive data sets to identify patterns, right? So it helps them to surface game-breaking bugs, uh, balance issue, uh, especially in multiple uh, player games. And what we're also hearing from our customers is that they're using machine learning services to detect and isolate cheaters. Um, and so they're moving players away from the legitimate players and keeping them quarantined with other cheaters where they can play against each other. And they all do this with uh, with machine learnings. Um, there's a number of other uh, levels of AI ML um, uh, that do not require specific machine learning knowledge. Okay, it, it's quite, um, some of them are quite easy to, to install and, and this is really something that will help you um, in the development of your, of your game and um, again in the uh, player experience. So um, two more examples. The first one is Voodoo, um, which is a, a French-based uh, mobile gaming company, uh, and it's res responsible for hits like uh, Elix Jump and, uh, and Ball Blast. And it's really the second uh, mobile company worldwide with the most download on the App Store, and it's two, two billion and, um, and counting since um, 2018. And they also invested in Fabrica Games last year. So that's the Istanbul-based uh, development studio that created um, uh, Drawcar. And so um, they, Voodoo uses machine learning to, to improve the uh, accuracy and quality of the ads bid that they're showing to, uh, to their user um, and, and really to personalize in-product marketing to, to promote uh, games within the games, right? We've all experienced that in, in apps. Um, uh, they also... 
use Amazon Personalize um, for uh, video, uh, Voodoo video. So that's in product marketing. Um, and it helps to increase the lifetime value of every user with uh, minimizing the acquisition cost within the inventory. And, um, and that's really, him, um, really important as well. Last example um, is uh, Angry Bird, uh, Dream Blast. So um, uh, last year, Rovio used AWS as well to, to launch it. So traditionally, there, there's a pain point, right, around um, quality insurance, right? It's the one of the, you know, the less fun experience in game development, but it's also a really critical one. So the, the QA process can be really painful and time consuming, um, and it's a lot of exercise to, to complete. Um, and in the mobile game space, developers are, are expected to be prolific of new content at the same time. Um, so it's, it's a pain point. So what Rovio did um, uh, when they experimented this uh, at the launch of Dream Blast, um, is that they, they used um, uh, our ML framework uh, to build two bots um, that would play the game to look for bug and estimate difficulty levels, right? And by running this, um, they ran you know, this at a massive scale on AWS, and they were able to dramatically simplify the QA process. And as a result of this, their developers and then QA team could focus on making the game fun, um, uh, which in turn, um, you know, it, it, it turns out that it's the most important thing, and it, it, was, a, it was a great success. OK, so um, last slide, just to show you how to get started. So here you, ha you have a link that you can, uh, get, that you can click. Um, and, and basically, it's um, um, you know, whether you're uh, on the business side, a developer, whether you know AWS or not, we have every program uh, that we you know we provide to 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 game studios to developers and we're really here to to help so there are um, uh, self paced tutorial for about 90 minutes and then there are technical path um, that that you can take um, but really whichever way you you choose to start your cloud journey we're really here uh, to help um, and and you know we can spend time with you to discuss your business need um, at every level try to offer the best pan uh, amazon aws game tech offer um, at every at, whether or not you're very advanced in the game or very early. Um, and we have a lot of different programs where we give you credits, where we help you, um, you know, with uh, uh, technical things as well, um, go to market. Okay, so I'm, I'm done. Uh, be happy to take a, a few questions. Um, I hope that you uh, now uh, know a little bit more about AWS and that you'll be uh, um, happy to try it. Oliver, it was an awesome presentation. Uh, it, it was also very special for me because on our studio, Famous Games, which is now on the quarterfinals on Epic Games Global Contest, we are also awesome. using AWS. Really? And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's awesome. It's so awesome. cool. Yeah. So here is a live example, guys. They are awesome. <laughs> um, and and really, don't don't hesitate to to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to sit down, understand what you're doing, understand how we can help, um, and point you in the right direction. Thank you, Olivier, for the amazing presentation. You were amazing. Um, now, um, I really want to thank you for participating and taking the time. Thank you for uh, having us. Uh, th th thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Uh, thank now, you. I, I, I think we better move to our next panel right now, Olivier. Thanks okay. one, once again. Bye, Olivier guys. Gamel was with us, guys. Uh, you can reach him out for further questions. Uh, and as an AWS user, I definitely recommend it. And I'm agreeing with Olivier. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you, you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.